Rub up your engines! Sam is God 3 says. 2001 Jeep and cranks. It won't start and it backfires. It's been running kind of poor lately anyway. All right, it could be a thousand different things. You know, you got to always do the simple things. Spark plugs, make sure the air filter's not clogged. Make sure that the fuel filter isn't clogged up. It's an old one, so it's an old vehicle. And here's why I always tell people to do if they check the simple things and it still doesn't. Take the spark plugs out. It's a six cylinder, easy. Take all six of them out. Get a compression test, or you can buy one of those AutoZone ones for 29 bucks or eBay, whatever. Check all the compression dry. Then get a tablespoon of oil and put it in each cylinder for one at a time. Put it in one then redo the compression. That's a wet compression. So you'll have readings for the dry and a wet. And if you find that the wet compression is way, way higher than the dry, the piston rings are worn out in your engine shot. Because I did one of those last year and hey, the compression was so low, the rings were so worn out. I told him, I said, your engine's just flat worn out. And in that guy's case, uh, he said, I don't want to rebuild this old junky thing, but eh, I'm going to drive it around. So he went to a junkyard and got a used engine installed for like 800 bucks, parts and labor. And he was happy. It ran okay when he got it back. Ruskus TV says, Scotty, how do you properly ask the mechanic to go and check out a used car at a dealership? I've been doing that for years. When you go to the dealership, you tell the dealership you're bringing it to your mechanic. That's the end of that. You do not have the mechanic go to the dealership. He doesn't have all his equipment to take it there. Any honest dealership will bring the car to you. Your mechanic checks it out. I have that all the time. Sometimes they make a mechanic, they make a, one of the salesmen come with them. Sometimes they don't, you know, you never know one way or another what they're going to let you do. But they got to let you take that car to your mechanic and not go somewhere else. That's just the way that it goes. Now, if you deal with a private individual and your mechanic's 800 miles away, well, that's going to be a hard thing. But even there, most private individuals will come with you to the mechanic and let you check it out. And if they don't, look somewhere else. Madman, why are SUVs so absurdly popular? I went to the grocery store and the list and four RAV4s and three CRVs. They're all over the place. They're convenient for people. Now, when I was a kid, the big thing was station wagons. We had a Ford station wagon. We had a Chevy station wagon. Those things were great. And then when I was a young father, we had a Toyota Camry station wagon, one of the best cars we ever had. I bought it used for a couple of grand, drove the heck out of it and sold it for $1,500 10 years later. I mean, the station wagons are great. Hardly anybody makes station wagons. They want to make SUVs instead. And people like them. And of course, when it comes to popularity, realize that humans are quite a bit like sheep. They follow each other around. So if everybody has SUVs, they all feel like, oh, uh, the next door neighbor has an SUV and the wife, I have to have an SUV too. So a lot of it, you know, it's a cultural thing, but they are handy vehicles. I mean, you can get a bunch of people that only got four doors, but then they'll have a big hatch where you can throw a bunch of crap in. So they are actually relatively handy devices, but I mean, so were the station wagons and the station wagons had even bigger trunks in them. You could sleep in them. You could get 10 kids in them, but uh, the days of the station wagon seems to have passed us all by. Willie Smith 10 says, I got an 06 Ford F-150. The engine's running poorly and it's got cylinder number five misfire and ignition coil primary secondary circuit codes. What you want to do is it's saying number five is misfire. Take the coil on plug assembly for number five, put it on number one and put the one on number five and drive it. And if it switches and now has a misfire on number one, you know, it's a coil and plug assembly. Just replace it. Simple thing to do, right? Now let's say you do that and it doesn't and it stays exactly the same. Well, I just fixed one of those a month ago and it turns out that it was a short in the computer. Now you're going to have a hard time figuring that out. I had to get out my oscilloscope and measure stuff and it turns out that the computer circuit that drove the number five was shorting out. Uh, I'd see drops in the oscilloscope readings and I had to replace the main computer for the vehicle and that was a lot of money. But if you switch the coils first, pray it moves and if it moves and you know the coil's bad. It's an easy test that you can do. Always try the simple things first and then work your way into more complex ones. New car guy. I got an 07 PT Cruiser. AC compressor keeps cutting on and off. The compressor's good and there's no air in the system. All right, if they cut on and off, you got to put pressure gauges on the low side and the high side and watch them. If you see that the high side pressure keeps going up high, then it shuts off, then up high, and then it shuts off, you got a restriction somewhere in the system 
that builds the pressure too high and then the switch turns it off could be a bad expansion valve a crushed line clogged condenser could be lots of things but you have to put both the low side and the high side gauges to see what's going on is it restricted on the high side or the low side are the pressures right you got to do all that you can't just guess because once you have those gauges on then you can get a really good analysis of what the system's doing is it building up pressure because or say there's a problem on the low side if the low side goes into suction it'll turn it on and off too and then when it builds up it'll start sucking and when it goes into suction and negative pressure it'll turn it off same thing so you got to do a pressure test first back bugs 345 why do my lights randomly turn on at night when a car is off I got a Hyundai X on 2008 odds are you got a burglar alarm problem and it's turning the lights on and off so what you need to do is first thing if you got a burglar alarm relay or a fuse take it out at night and if it stops doing it you'll know there's a problem in the burglar alarm system if it's an aftermarket burglar alarm system just disconnect it if it's the factory system though you're going to have to pay a mechanic who's got a Hyundai dealer scan tool to work on the burglar alarm system because it's part of the main computer you can't just unplug it it doesn't work that way it's a lot more complicated but most of the time that is alarm system unless you've got weird friends that are sneaking in and turning your lights on in the middle of the night just to freak the heck out of you <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.